So I'll leave it with Marcel. Thanks. All right, so uh, before we get started, can we give Michael and his whole team a quick big round of applause for <laughs> doing their time? Can't believe it's over already. All right, so uh, before I start my talk, let me tell you a secret. Uh, Freak is not going to like to hear it, but package development is not some black magic in a small town in Belgium. So uh, you, can all <laughs> you can all do it, and I'll show you how. Uh, so, we have a quick intro about me. My name is Marcel Potziot. I'm a managing partner and developer at Beyond Code, which is my company. And earlier this, this year, together with uh, Frick and all the Spassi team, we worked on Flare and Ignition. Feel free to follow me on Twitter if you want. All right, so why should you care about package development in the first place? I think there are three major benefits. There are a couple more, but these are the three I want to focus on. So the first thing is, by stripping out parts of your application into packages, it allows you to, com to uh, concentrate on your core domain and on your core features. So let's say that you work at a company that develops web shops, and your boss comes in and wants you to create a CMS for one of your shops. Now, the core domain and the core feature of what your application is doing is selling things online and making it easier for your cl customers to sell and make money online. And the CMS is not necessarily part of that core domain. So if you would add this to the monolithic application, you would suddenly make the CMS a part of your core domain, or at, it, at least it would live in the same thing. <coughs> so I think that if you strip that out to a separate package, you get a lot of benefits because suddenly the CMS is its own core domain, and it becomes a lot easier to maintain it becomes a lot easier to add features to it because it's just a small thing. It's just the CMS and nothing else. And once you start doing it, it becomes a lot easier to reuse these things. So let's say a colleague of yours comes into your office like six months later and says, hey, I need to add a CMS to another project. And then you start copy-pasting things around from your old project, <laughs> at least I did sometime. And when you, you just use packages, you can just say, okay, use this package. And even if um, you cannot apply 100% of the package and reuse all of it, I'm pretty sure that you will still save some time by reusing existing things. And even if you do this, you can then extend this package to make it work with other pieces of your software. And the third benefit is that you can get documentation for free. Well, it's not really for free, but uh, because the scope of a package should be very small, it becomes a lot more enjoyable um, to document it. I guess we all don't really like writing documentation as developers, but uh, at least I feel when the scope is small enough, it's at least easy to do it and more enjoyable than if I would have to document the whole shop with how the CMS is somehow attached to it. So the package that I want to build with you today is called Laravel Badges. It has two main features. The first one is I want to create a badge. So I want to add some kind of gamification to my applications. So a badge would be a one-year membership. And the second feature is I want to define rules based on which the badge gets applied. So for example, the one-year membership badge gets applied when a user in my system has been created less than a year ago. Uh, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to use a package boilerplate because I simply don't have the time to start with an empty directory and start from scratch. We're using TDD because that's how we do it, right? Yeah, okay. Um, and then we will implement the actual logic of the package, and then I'll show you how you can publish the package if you want to open source it. So let's start. To um, build the actual boilerplate codes, I created a website called laravelpackageboilerplate.com. I'm also going to tweet that out later. And the website basically allows you to choose what kind of package you want to generate and what kind of boilerplate you want to generate. So you can choose between a Laravel-specific package, which comes with a service provider and some predefined config files included, uh, or a generic PHP package, which is what I'm going to do right now. Then you can fill in the details. Uh, like your vendor name, the package name, information about the author, 
And last but not least, the license, which is really important. Whenever you want to publish something on the open, please always ensure that you have at least one license. If you don't know which license to pick, you can click on this question mark, uh, which will lead you to choosealicense.com. And there you can see which license uh, allows you um, what to do, what the user needs to do when they uh, download your software and what they can do with it. Um, if you find software online without a license at all, it basically means you're not allowed to use it. So please always choose a license if you want to. And then next, you can download the project as a zip file. Um, I already did that because I thought it would be boring watching me do a Composer install over the Wi-Fi here. So um, this is basically what it looks like. We have an empty class. We have a test that returns true. And we have so a bunch of files that ensure that once we run this on some CI systems, it'll make our lives easier. So the important file is the Composer JSON. Is this big enough for you in the back? I can't see anything, but I guess silence is a yes. OK, cool. So uh, the Composer JSON file is basically what tells Composer and Packagist, if you publish the package, that all the files in here are a package that you can install. So we have the name of the package. Then we have some meta information, like description, keywords, information about the author, the license, stuff like that. And then we come to the require section. So similar to the require section in your Laravel application, this <coughs> is the list of dependencies my specific package has. So in here, I'm depending on PHP 7.1, which is a bit outdated. Um, and I'm depending on Illuminate support in version 6, which basically allows us to make use of Laravel features like the service provider um, in version 6, so everyone can install this in Laravel projects from version 6 and up. Then we have the dev section, and those are the dependencies that we use while developing this package. So we use PHP unit to run our tests. And I'm also using Orchestra Test Bench, which is a very cool package that basically allows us to test our package as if it would live in a Laravel package. I'll show you later. Then we have the autoload section, which basically just says that everything in the Beyond Code Laravel badges namespace lives in the source directory. And during development, everything in the Beyond Code Laravel badges tests namespace lives in my test directory. And that's pretty much all that we need for now. So let's start implementing um, our features. So the first feature was that I want to be able to create badges. So let's create a test. It can create badges like this. So the test would look like I want to create a badge. And a badge has a name, something like one year membership. And let's give it a description too. Granted to users that are members for more than a year. Cool, my jet lag brain can type. All right, and then the actual test would be that we assert that the badge exists. So pretty simple test, but this would test the functionality that we have a model, we have a database, we can insert the badge in the database, and after inserting it, it exists. Um, please note that this test is not extending the regular PHP unit test case, but instead I'm extending from the orchestra test bench test case, uh, which in the back when running the test is going to boot up the RBEL. So let's see what happens when I run this test. Spoiler, it fails. Um, okay, so class badge not found. Okay, that makes sense. So let's create the batch model now. So. Create a new class badge. It's going to extend from an uh, eloquent model. And I'm going to say that we don't have any guarded properties just to make my life a bit easier doing the test so I don't have to fight the mass assignments. Then let's import the class in here and rerun the tests. It still fails. Um, and this time we get the error that the access den <coughs> is denied for forge at localhost, which is kind of strange because we haven't defined that we want to use MySQL or forge or anything. Um, but this comes from Orchestra Test Bench. So the default Laravel application under the hood has forge as the default username and it uses MySQL. Now, 
when like a colleague of mine or when I publish this on open source, I don't want people to have my SQL installed in the specific database just to run my tests. So I want to use an in-memory SQLite database. And luckily enough, Laravel ships with an um, in-memory database. So we can just specify that we want to use one in our PHP unit XML file by adding a new section called PHP. And then we just define an environment variable. So we say the DB connection will have the value of testing. And when we run the tests again, it's still going to fail, but now we were able to connect to the database because it's now using the in-memory SQLite database, and we don't have a badges table, which <coughs> makes sense because we only have the model but no migration. So let's create the migration next. Um, I like to structure my packages so that they resemble the, the default Laravel structure. So the source directory is basically my app directory, and uh, everything else lives outside of it, like assets or even database migrations. So let's create a database directory. In there, we have a migrations directory. And in here, we have a new file called createBadgesTable.php. So let's write our migration. Migrations are not namespaced, so we don't need to do that in here. CreateBadgesTable is going to extend from a migration. Let's import this. And then we have an up method where we create the table. So we have schema, create, badges. Then we get the blueprint of our table. I'm going to import this so that it becomes readable. All right. And our badges table will increment an ID. It will have a string for our name. It is going to have a text for the description and some timestamps. All right, so this should be enough. And then we need a second table that will hold the connection between the badge and whatever model we associate with it. So let's create that too. I gave it the fancy name badgeables. And we got another blueprint of the table. And now this is just an unsigned integer of the badge ID. And we're going to use a polymorphic relation that holds the model that we associate, because we don't know upfront which models we want to associate later on with our batch. OK, cool. So I think that's our migration, but our test still does not know about it, and the test will still fail. So how can we let our test know about it? Since migrations are just basic PHP classes, we can just create them and run the up method on it. So I'm just going to overwrite the setup method and do this beautiful void. Call the parent setup. And in here, we can just require our migration. Well, it should be here. There we go. And then we can new it up. No, not that one. And run up on it. And now, every time a test runs, we will <coughs> load the class and perform the up method on it. With a bit of luck, yeah, OK, cool. So our first feature is basically done. Our package can create badges. But there's a problem with that, because even though we have the migration in our package, if someone would install the package right now, they would know that a migration exists. So the way we do this with Laravel is by using a service provider. So let's create a service provider in here. Let's say badges service provider. Going to extend from the service provider that comes with Laravel. And in here, we have a register method where we can add things to the container. We don't need this right now. But what we can also do in a service provider is we can say, hey, this package is going to publish some files. So whoop, we are going to publish the migration in this location. And when it gets published, please copy it over to my database path to migrations. Then we use the current timestamp, followed by create badges table.php. So now when someone installs your package and runs php artisan vendor publish 
and chooses your service provider, Laravel is automatically going to copy our database migration that we have in here to the user's database migrations folder and giving it the current timestamp as the folder name, as the file name. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much the first feature. The second one that was that I want to be able to associate a batch to a model. So let's write a test for it. It can associate badges. It's going to be a test. And the way this test would work is, first of all, we need a batch that we can associate. And then um, in my packages, I like to just come up with an API that I think is good to work with. And then later on, I try to make it work. So for this, I think something like this would be good. <coughs> we have a batch provider where I want to grant the one-year membership badge to a test user class when a specific condition returns true. So when the user created at is less than now minus a year. So when it's older than a year, I want to grant this badge to this user model. So we would have set up this, and now to actually test this, we still need to create a user. So we're going to say test user, create. Uh, I want to reuse the existing user table that ships with Laravel, then I don't have to create a migration in here just to test this feature. And the default user uh, Laravel migration for the user has a name, it needs an email, <coughs> and we need a password, and we need to provide the created ad date because that's how we base the, the page provider on. So then we say now minus 12 month, okay? And then the actual test would be that we assert <coughs> that the count of the user badges would be one, okay? So this is how such a test could look like. We create a badge, we define the rule that it gets defined when the user was created less than a year ago. Um, we create the user and then we have the badge. Okay, let's see how we can make this work. Let's start with the test user. So I'm just going to create a class in my test in here. So here we just do the test user, which is going to extend from the default user that comes with Laravel, since I want to reuse that table. Once again, we, don't, we say we don't have any guarded properties. And I'm going to overwrite the table as well and set it to users, because by default, Laravel would now um, guess the table name based on the class, and it would come up with test underscore users, and I don't want that. So, like this. Uh, so, this is basically to make this part work, but we don't have the badges. Uh, the way I imagine this to work is that every model that wants to create the uh, relation between badges can use a trait. So, in here we would say something like use has badges. And then this trait would give the relationship that we want in here. So, let's create that trait. Let's put it in a traits directory. <coughs> As badges will be a trait. Okay, let's import it so that PHP Storm can do its magic. Okay, and basically all that this trait does is it provides one function called badges, where we are going to return a morph to menu relationship to our batch model. We called it model in the migration, in the database table, and the table itself is called badgeables. All right. So now this should work. We should be able to access this. We can create our user, but this batch provider still does not exist. So let's do that too. So we have a batch provider class. It's not going to extend anything. And this class basically holds uh, three properties. We grant a badge to a model when a condition is true. And then our public API looks something like grant badge. Then we return this so that we can easily chain our methods to a model. 
All right. Return this again. And then we have the when method with the condition. And in here, we would do our apply badges logic. OK. So this would be basically all we need. Um, to apply the badge, as Jamek told you yesterday, we are going to use an eloquent event. So this is definitely not the most performant way to do this, but it works. So what I want to do is I want to listen for an event, namely the eloquent.saved event. So every time this model gets saved, we're going to call a closure. And in this closure, we are going to check if the condition returns true, we're going to associate the badge with this model. So since we only have the name of the badge, we first need to pull it out of the database. So this would be badge, where name this badge, first or fail. Uh, in reality, you would have to do some more exception handling in here and throw my best custom exception, but I'll leave it at is. And then we pass this badge to the closure and then perform the condition check. So this is then basically if a call to this condition with the model that just got saved returns true. We want to associate the badge with the model, so we're going to say model badges sync without detaching. So this is going to attach the badge without removing <coughs> the existing badges and without um, adding it uh, multiple times. So here we have the badge ID. Okay, so let's go back to our test. Um, here we, I wanted to actually make this work like a facade. Uh, now I could use a real-time facade. I'm not a big fan of those. So to see if it actually works, let's just create a new instance of our batch provider. So in here we have a new batch provider. We grant the one-year membership to the test user when the condition returns true. Okay, cool, let's see what it test says. All right, it fails. No such table users, which is strange because it comes with Laravel, right? But um, Orchestra Test Bench actually does not migrate these sort of default migrations because you might want to override it in your own test. But luckily, we can just tell Test Bench that it should do this by saying this load Laravel migrations, and then we have our users table. So if we run this again, cool, all two tests are green. And to prove that this really work, if I do this with 11 month, it should fail. And it does. So now the actual size is zero <coughs> while we assert that we have one. Perfect. OK, cool. Now um, I still have time to create the facade. So um, as I said, we could use a real-time facade, but let's take a look at how we can do uh, a regular facade. So let's create a new directory, facades. And in here, we are going to create our batch provider facade class, which is going to extend from the facade that comes with Illuminate support. And all we need to define here is the get facade accessor method. So this method should return what Laravel should pull out of the container when this facade gets accessed. Uh, in our case, we don't have any interface or contract that we need to pull out, so we can just return the concrete implementation, which in our case is the batch provider class itself. Like this. OK, cool. Now back to our test. So we should now be able to replace this by doing something like this and use the facade instead. So let's run the test. And well, it fails because the class batch provider was not found. So in Laravel, these facades work by, they register themselves basically and so that you can access them as in the root namespace. So when we want to test this, we basically just have to tell Orchestra Test Bench that we want to do the same thing. So in here, we can just define a new method. Get package aliases. 
or you can return an array of aliases that we want to be accessible in this test. So in our case, it's the batch provider, and it points to the batch provider facade class. And with a bit of luck, it still works. OK, cool. So now we can access and test that our batch provider can be used using the facade that we registered. It can be used using the regular implementation. OK, and um, as I said, this is not the most performant way. I wouldn't really use this in production, but uh, it can show you what you can do. Now, to actually publish this thing, it's pretty easy. Um, if you want to publish it on GitHub, you, all you need to do is create a repository on GitHub, uh, which I did. I'm not going to push it now, because that's kind of boring to see, I guess. Um, once you do this, you can then go to Packagist, which is the Composer package registry. There can create an account and log in with GitHub. That's the easiest way to do it. Go to submit, and then in here you just paste in the GitHub URL, press check, and then it will check if an existing package exists with the given name or <coughs> if the vendor name is already taken. Uh, if it does not, you can just add it to the registry, tag a version, and then you can use it. Um, but even if you don't want to submit it, you can still use private packages. Um, and just point to the GitHub URL in your Composer JSON file. OK. That's all I have. Um, so I hope that I was able to show you that you can create a package. It's not like magic. Um, it's really more about how knowing how you can test the package and what features Orchestra Test Bench gives you. There's a lot more. Uh, if you want to know more about package development, I created a video course that you can access at this bit.ly URL, which has, uh, I think, a $10 coupon for you. And uh, in addition, if you want to try out Flare, this is a coupon code that gives you one month of Flare for free if you want to do that. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>